Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So these are the Rokit glasses. They are the most practical and most feature packed smart glasses I have tested yet. And I have tested all of them, almost all of them anyway, because I've been covering the smart glasses industry since its infancy. Like going back to six, seven years ago from the really bulky early prototypes all the way to the most recent batch of products from companies gigantic like Meta and Xiaomi to smaller startups like Even Realities or Brilliant Slap. I've tested almost every pair of smart glasses that have hit the market and these are the most complete ones. So up until this point, almost all the smart glasses I've tested, they fall into either one or two camps. They're either like the Ray-Ban Metas with built-in cameras but no screen, or there's something like the Even Realities G1 with a screen embedded on the lens but no cameras. And the rare glasses that did combine both screen and camera, they were very bulky, like this guy, the Ray Neo X2. I mean, this is significantly bulkier than the Rokit glasses. And if I wear these in public, like people are definitely gonna know these are not normal glasses. So it's cool to see that Rokit, one of the leading manufacturers of AR headsets and eyewear in China, they have figured it out because the Rokit glasses they somehow have a functional camera and a pair of micro OLED screens embedded on the lens, but in a package that looks very sleek and almost normal. Like, yeah, the frames are probably still a little bit thicker than a conventional pair of glasses, but they don't look so thick that they look like an obvious piece of gadget. In fact, I've worn these in public and I don't think people around me knew that these are not normal glasses. So one thing I want to get out of the way early is that it's very hard for me to show you exactly what I'm seeing from the screen from these glasses. I have only two methods to do it. The first way is to stick a phone camera behind the lens and it's just very awkward to do that. The second way is to use a third party beta screen recording software that does not record in high resolution. So that's why Almost all the footage you see of the screen, they either look a little bit soft in resolution or a little bit like you might see some flickering in the text. Rest assured, that is purely because of the phone camera or the recording software. To my eyes, the text projected looks sharp and there's no flickering. So the glasses weigh just 49 grams and Rokit's calling it the world's lightest fully functional AI smart glasses. And I actually think that claim is pretty accurate. So what can the Rokit glasses do? The first feature I already mentioned is that there's a camera built in that can take photos and videos. You can activate the camera by pressing a button on top of the arm or just use your voice commands like, hi Rokit, take a photo or record a video and it will begin recording. So it's awesome to have a camera that allows you to film and document your life hands-free. So I've been using it a lot the last few weeks as I'm riding a motorbike on Thailand to document the crazy traffic or when I'm taking pictures of friends at coffee shops. It's also awesome to get a first-person perspective of when you're playing with a pet or when you're doing some kind of physical activity like swinging or riding a bike. The glasses look pretty natural. Hello. I think the photos look they look pretty good. I mean, they're not going to beat a flagship smartphone camera, but they are quite good for something so discreet. And also when you're recording a video or taking a photo, there is an indicator light that will light up. So that's good for a privacy concern. So people around you will know when you're filming. So that's one of the major uses of the camera. The second use is a pair of micro OLED screens embedded onto the lens. It uses waveguide technology that projects text that appears to be floating in front of me. So that text and the screen is connected to ChatGBT and I can access ChatGBT via voice. And from there, I can ask the glasses to analyze the scene. So for example, earlier I was walking outside my condo and there was like a giant billboard in all Thai language. And I didn't understand what that billboard said because it was in Thai. So I asked the glasses to translate the text for me. And within a few seconds, it was able to scan the Thai text and convert it to English for me to understand. Likewise, I have this box of face mask here. It is all in Thai. I can ask the glasses to translate the text to English. Can you translate the text here to English? This is a box of Megrhythm Gentle Steam Eye Mask, unscented, with five sheets, 
Designed to relax your eyes using gentle... Of course, the glasses don't just translate Thai to English. It supports all the usual languages that are supporters, like Japanese, Spanish, German, French, Chinese, even Cantonese, which is surprising. Because these glasses, they also have built-in microphones and speakers. So in addition to just translating written text, it can also hear a language and then interpret that language back to English for me. So right here, you can see that it is correctly listening Cantonese and then translating it to English for me to see. That's impressive because Cantonese, it's a very complicated slang filled language. It's like so much more complicated th than traditional Mandarin. So the fact that the glasses can do it, it's cool. It can also, you know, interpret Japanese as you can see right here. And the glasses are also smart enough to identify specific parts of a frame. So right here, I'm asking it to tell me just the vertical line of text in the poster. It's in Japanese. Can you translate it to English for me? The vertical Japanese text says, When you see the violence, you will understand the meaning of fate. So as mentioned, ChatGBT is the large language AI model running on here. And the glasses are powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon AR1, a powerful silicon design for smart glasses running AI. So as a result, the AI of the Roku glasses is much faster than previous AI I've tested on other smart glasses. Like for example, the Frame by Brilliance Labs, it can do a lot of the same stuff that this glasses can do in terms of AI, but it is quite slow. It does take like 10 to 15 seconds of wait every time I ask the AI to do anything. With the Roku glasses, the wait time is shrunk down to anywhere from like four to eight seconds, which is a lot faster in a real world scenario. There's a bunch of Thai text here. Can you tell me what this says in English? This sticker shows the refrigerator's energy efficiency rating with a five indicating high efficiency. So over the past two weeks of wearing glasses, I've been asking it for basic information which saves me time from needing to pull out my phone. For example, one of the things I always do is I have to convert a weight from the metric system to the imperial system. Because if you see my like laptop reviews, I'm always like, Oh, so this guy weighs like 500 grams or about like whatever pounds for Americans. So before to do that conversion, I would have to go on Google to do it. Now I can just ask the glasses. I can just be like, hey, Rokin, what's 900 grams to pounds? And it'll tell me within a few seconds. It saves me from needing to pull out my phone or go to a laptop. Okay, let's take a look at the hardware. So the glasses I mentioned weigh 49 grams and they're very comfortable to wear because the hinge area of the arm, they're quite flexible. And the nose piece is also removable and the nose piece has a soft jelly cushion. So it sits on your nose pretty comfortably. The speakers are located on the bottom of the arm, just about where my ears are. So the speakers are obviously for when the AI is telling me something, or also I can use it to listen to music or podcasts. They're basically like a set of wireless earbuds. And then there's a touch sensitive panel here on the right side that supports taps and swipes. This panel is how you control the on-screen UI. So by default, the UI is very basic. It just shows you the time, the temperature, battery percentage of the glasses. And then if you have incoming notifications like a text message, it will show up in text too. But then if you swipe on the panel, then you move to the second page with a couple more options to choose from, including a teleprompter. So you can have text display in a scrolling manner or translator or navigation. So you can ask it to navigate you to the nearest 7-Eleven or the nearest McDonald's. Can you navigate me to the nearest 7-Eleven? Sure. The nearest 7-Eleven is about 150 meters away on Sukhumvit 2-2. Now you do have to pair the Rokit glasses to Rokit's companion app available on iOS and Android to use the glasses because the glasses uses the internet that your phone is connected to. Like it does not connect to the internet by itself. The app is where you can also transfer the photos and videos captured by this guy over to your phone. And also where you can see a full transcript of your AI conversation. So as I mentioned, I am always traveling. Like next month, I'm going to 
Berlin, Prague, Munich, Los Angeles, and then maybe Paris too. So these glasses are going to come in very handy when I need to translate a menu from French to English, or when I need to check the time back home. I can just be like, hey, what's the time in LA? Or when I'm riding a bike, I can record hands-free video. Now as for battery life, it really depends on how often you turn on the screen or ask it to record a video. If I'm really pushing it, like I'm actively asking the AI to analyze a scene to translate text, then I find that the glasses can last me about six to seven hours. But if you're under more modest casual use, like if you're not actively pushing the AI and cameras, then these glasses can like last all day. To charge the glasses, unfortunately, it does use a proprietary cable, which I'm not a fan because proprietary cable, if you lose the cable, you have to buy it officially from Roken again. I wish the glasses would charge via USB-C like some other smart glasses I've tested. However, there is an optional battery charging case that Roket will sell. That case will connect to USB-C. So with that, you don't have to rely on the proprietary cable. Ultimately, I think the Roket glasses are awesome and they live up to the promise of what a pair of AI smart glasses are supposed to be. Previous offerings were either too bulky and kind of embarrassing to wear in public, or they were just like too slow and lacking features. Like the Even Realities G1, I really like how these look and they look so discreet, but they don't have a camera. So that means it can't really do anything like analyze a scene or take photos or videos. All you can do with these glasses is ask it, hey, what's the time? What's the weather? Like you can get so much more done with the Rokit glasses. So Rokit is launching the glasses on Kickstarter first with a price of $4.99 US dollars. Apparently the final retail price will be $5.99 US dollars. And the first 2,000 people who order via the Kickstarter link will get $20 off for a price of $4.79 US dollars. The link is in the description below if you do have an interest in these glasses. Now I know the price can be considered a little bit high, but at the same time, I think if you're someone who will actually put the glasses to use, I think the price, it's reasonable considering how many things that this pair of glasses can do and the fact that it is bleeding edge technology. We have not seen smart glasses with micro OLED displays and functional cameras in a form factor this small before. Like this is new technology. So ultimately, I think the Roku glasses are a true beginning for AR eyewear because I think AR eyewear is definitely the future. Every company is working on it. Like I definitely think in, you know, maybe still five more years away that a lot of people will be walking around with these things on their faces. It is the future, whether we like it or not. So these are the Rokit glasses. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would help me a lot. And yeah, I have a link in the description down below if you are interested. Thanks for watching.